Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everyone today? Laura, great to see you here. Thanks so much. First one that I saw come up. Oh, it's been a heck of a morning already. Got some good stuff going on with 60 Up that I'm very excited about. So I was up early, about 4 a.m., um, working on some new projects for us. So, um, and all the projects go into uh, how can we improve our product and, and, and really, it's not even improve our product, how can we improve the results that people are getting? Um, my mind is always turning and what can we do better? So um, that's why I was there. Ginny, great to see you here. Haven't seen you in a little while, Ginny. So uh, great to see that name back up here again. Uh, good morning, mum, how are you doing? Thanks for being here today all the way from England, sunny England. As you can see, I'm doing my class today back inside the house. Uh, the reason being a couple of issues. My ankle is still um, recovering, I hope. Um, it feels like it's getting a little better. And I wanted to also make it more intimate. The Tuesday classes I like a little bit more um, personal, a little bit more closed in, if that's the right way to say it, for um, my talking. So I don't have to use the earbuds or AirPods or whatever they're called. I, I never know what they are. I'm gonna learn that. That's one of my goals, is to learn what they're actually called. And then be able to um, talk a little bit more on a personal level, especially on the Tuesday classes, which are not so much about the workout. What I want to encourage is people that are just getting on the board, people that haven't started, because a lot of you have, have gone through this beginning stage that really helped, and then so far progressed that now you're workout fiends. And I don't want to leave behind those people that are just starting out, just got their 60 up balance board, and need that more slow progression. So Tuesday's going to continue to be the base foundation. I came up with a couple of new exercises today that I'm very excited about. Um, even the first one, the tapping, I came up with a new idea. I was thinking about the brain connection, the balance, the way things change and how we can react to changes in life. And so I came up with a new exercise last night while I was doing it, which was about mind, um, free, freeing the mind to let the brain do the work um, and, and being able to adjust your balance with sudden changes of direction. So watch out for that today. I'm having water because... The last few days I felt a little dehydrated. I don't know why, the weather hasn't been especially hot. Um, and maybe I'm feeling hydrated, dehydrated because I haven't been focusing or aware of it as much because it hasn't been so hot, so I haven't been drinking. But I've noticed that I'm feeling a little dehydrated in everybody. It's critical that you stay hydrated. Um, and with the summer coming back, and I know my friends down in Arizona and um, I was in Las Vegas a couple of weekends ago, and, you know, as the heat begins, because especially that dry heat, the humid, I know you sweat because you're aware of it. Maybe you um, drink a little bit more. I remember when I was down in Miami, had a great time down there. But, oh, my gosh, you just sweat all the time. I was shooting a commercial out there a number of years ago, which was great. Had so much fun down at the Orange Bowl and stayed in Coconut Grove. Um, just had a great time down there. But I remember I was drinking all the time because I was just sweating in the dry heat when I lived in Las Vegas for a couple of years. Sometimes you just kind of ignore it or go in the air conditioning and forget that you're actually sweating. So my whole message there, and I'm rambling on, is, uh, is uh, you know, obviously stay hydrated. Uh, just going back into here. Uh, hi, Pat. Great to see you here. Thanks so much for being here today. Um, Laura, always already said look, hi, Laura, but it says you're watching again, Laura. Kirk, good morning. I was just talking about Arizona and there's Kirk. Bright and early. Brenda, great to see you here. Brenda, is this your first time here? I'm not sure if uh, you've been here before uh, or when you got the board. I just don't re remember the name. Um, and if you have, I apologize. But today is the basic day. It's what I call brain training, where we get the brain to feel what's happening on the body. And it, all the workouts with 60 Up are about feeling, you know, getting confident, getting comfortable, letting the body react. And really, um, as you progress, congratulating yourself, celebrating yourself as to how comfortable you've become again with your balance. So if it's your first time here, Brenda, welcome and thanks so much for being here. And if not, I apologize. Um, sometimes I don't see everybody that's on. Uh, Betsy, great to see you, Betsy. How's Herb as well? I hope you're both doing fantastic. Um, and I know you're so committed. So thanks so much for that as well. Um, so my message for today I was thinking about this yesterday because I was on another project yesterday uh, working on, and, it's, uh, and I think I've said this probably over a year ago when we were talking, that change, change is critical, obviously, to 
development, to momentum, for learning, for living, there's always going to be change. And I, as I thought about it, I was like, you know, the only thing that is constant in life is change. You know, all the successes we have don't last forever. All the bad times we have don't last forever. There's constant change going on. So the only thing that's constant is change. So how do we handle that? You know, I know my life has had to change a little bit because of my ankle injury. And I've continued to keep going and keep going and because I've kept going and haven't um, treated it probably the best that I should. It's continued to flare up and swell and I'm constantly battling this. You know, I wanna, I've want i got to do some stuff and then I've got to rest. I've got to do some stuff and because I'm driven, I'm always doing stuff. And so the constant change is my physical ability has suffered because of my lack of commitment to do what's necessary because I'm constantly going. Um, and I don't necessarily regret that. But because of what I'm doing, I have a change in my physical ability right now. And all of you are in the same boat. We're always having these different challenges. Someone's doing great. They're living life. Um, many of you have had a fantastic results from the 60 up. You're now out doing things and suddenly you pull a muscle. Suddenly something changes that you have to do. And then suddenly your balance has begun to fall off a little bit. And you're back on the 60 up balance board again, learning to go or... COVID comes along or the vaccines come along or so there's always change going on. And the thing that makes you so powerful is the ability to adapt to change. And that's what's amazing about the human race. Think about how long we've been around, not long in, in the uh, huge context of the universe. But think about how we've been able to change. Think about when you were younger and what the world was like and what it is now and how we continue to live and the way to be able to thrive and not just survive is to handle change. And that's why you're so powerful. So think about that today um, as things start coming along or you begin to get a little bit frustrated with things that are happening in the world. Think about how you've always handled change. And I go back to the new year. At 11.59.59 is very different than 12.00.00. It takes one second for everybody to suddenly celebrate when the reality is we live in new seconds every single day. So try and celebrate them and find the best of you, even in the down times. Whoever's winning is wrong and whoever's losing is wrong because there's always change going on. Anyway, with that being said, let me just go back and say into here. Um, <laughs> Mom, it says, Rosa watching, Rosa watching, Rosa watching, Rosa watching, Rosa watching. It's like, I know that you're on your computer, you're on your phone, you're on your iPad to find out the best way. Hey, there's Jessica Jones. Hi, Jessica. Um, Jessica runs the customer service experience side of um, the, uh, how do I say it, Jessica? The business side of everything that's going on, the ordering and all the different stuff. And she's done a great job there. And I know, Jessica, that you're moving home right now. So good luck with that. We're all cheering you on and thanks so much for all the help. Uh, Rose is watching again. Bob Eubanks is in the house. Morning, Danny. You know what, Bob? My mum used to call me Danny boy. Nobody else really does. So you're gonna have to fight my mum for that right. Um, and I'm just saying that because it saves me having to respond to it. Good morning, Bob. Bobby boy, good to see you. Uh, Denise, good to see you from Arizona. There's another of my Arizona friends down there. Um, so great to see you here as well. And Joe, great to see you here. Thanks so much. Ildi's back. Um, Ildi's always back. Great to see you, Ildi. I love your posts on Facebook as well. Always some great stuff going on there. So with that said, again, feel your body today. Don't go crazy. If you've got slight aches and pains, figure out what you can do and what you can't do. I'm going to be doing the same today, but I've got a couple of new exercises. So if we're ready, again, remember, we're going all the way back to basics. So if this is simple for you, I guarantee you it's simple for me too, but I'm still doing it. One, because I want to help people, but just importantly, it's important that I keep going back sometimes and playing a bit like a kid. All right. Very simple class today. I'm going to move this forward just a little bit. I can actually pull that in a little bit if I do this as well. Tilt it down. Pull it in. Let's see if my head is cut off now. If I step up, oh, look at that. My head is cut off. But you can't see the red ball either. Okay, is everyone ready? You're gonna put both hands on the yellow poles. And all I want you to do is just rock the board side to side. And I want you to push it into the ground. 
and feel it hit the ground. What we're doing is we're getting cognitive awareness of the pressure in our hands right now and what's happening in the hands, how much you're gripping. Now I want you to push, but grip less. This is one of the things I've been talking about recently is relaxing the grip on the poles, knowing that it's there, but you don't have to hang on for dear life. You only need to squeeze those hands when you want some help. Good, now what I want you to do is take your hands, push them forward, so you're not actually holding onto the poles at all as far as a grip. You're pushing with the inside and the inside again. Now relax the fingers and run your fingers through the air. I'm not touching the board, I'm just doing this, so again, we keep relaxed. Remember, I was uh, riding with a guy, I think his name was Ivan Dominguez. He was a professional bike rider who rode the Tour de France. Just start stepping a little bit side to side now in here. Run those fingers, but my thumbs are resting on the top. My fingers aren't holding on. Uh, and Ivan Dominguez, I was riding up a mountain. We we're going up to the Los Angeles crest at the top of the mountain um, out in Pasadena. And it was New Year's Day. It was snowing, it had been snowing and we're riding up there and it's a long climb on the bike. Good, what I want you to do now is just tap your foot to the side of your calf. So as we're riding, I was gripping those handlebars so hard and he looked at me and he said, hey Dan, when you're riding, he said, sometimes play the piano on the finger, so I'll be like this. He said, it relaxes your hands, stops you putting stress in the, in the handlebars and then at the same time, it takes the stress off of your forearms and allows the power and the thought to go where it needs to, which obviously on a bike is more into your feet and your legs. So I incorporated that as we've done the 60 up and it really helps. Okay, now hold on to the, onto the um, poles a little bit. What I want you to do now is stand still and is here. I want you to just don't let the board touch the ground. Keep it still. We're just going side to side and just touching the calf and you'll notice how as you're going, your balance begins to change because your arms are having to change the length. As you step to the left, the left arm goes shorter and the right, the right arm goes sh shorter, but we're still staying balanced on that single leg and you can keep it smaller if you want to. Okay, great. Now what I want you to do is I now want you to stand on just your right leg, find that balance, and I want you to rock the board. Here we go. So we're just there rocking the board. Now I can tell a big difference with my right leg because of the ankle injury. Make sure the leg is very slightly bent. And I was teaching this actually yesterday to our customer service staff, um, just making sure they stay educated. Change the left leg. When you go to bend your leg, push your butt back. So when you're on a single leg, you push your butt back as if someone's a little too close and just gonna knock them away and then bend your leg. Now we're using the, um, the thigh muscles, the quads, the feet, rather than having a straight leg, um, or when you bend your leg, pushing your knee forward, because that puts stress onto that, um, what's it called? Put stress onto your, uh, onto your knee, because you're pushing into the knee rather than letting the muscles do the work. There you go, okay, great. Now what I want you to do is go back to your right leg, put it in the middle, I'm going to hold the board, push your butt back, bend the knee, and all I want you to do now is just rock that left leg forward and back. Try and keep that board still and feel how the pressure points change on your foot, where it's a little bit more on your toe, maybe your big toe, your little toe. Good. Bring the left leg back to the center. Push your butt back a little bit, knock that person away from behind you, bend the knee, find that balance, and now swing that leg forward and back, there you go, nice and easy, just forward and back, and feel how the pressure points on your left foot are changing. The right leg is not the one really that's doing the work, the left leg is always the one that's doing all the work. There you go, perfect, excellent, good. Now come and stand back down into here. We're going on to the next exercise now, which is the tapping, just come up, Nice and easy, this is gonna be a change, so don't put the ball back on that. Just come and tap the right foot and the left foot and the right foot. Now I can tell when I'm doing this that when I go to tap my toe, it's stretching my right ankle. I wouldn't notice with my left because it has freedom of movement, 
So I'm gonna change this up for me to go to my heel. I'm gonna tap my heel because again, I want to adapt to fit my body. Now, you can make that decision yourself whether you want to do heel tapping or whether you want to do toe tapping or if you wanna mix it up, I can go heel on my right, toe on my left. Good, keep your hands nice and relaxed on those poles and we're just going into here. Okay, good, we're going on to the next exercise. This is the one that I wanted to go over that I created last night. Lift your knee up, go to tap one and suddenly tap two. So watch again, we go here, I go, oh, now I'm gonna tap over here. So the brain has got the idea of going down and suddenly we're gonna change our step. No different than I'm walking down, oh, I'm gonna step on a rock and I suddenly change at the last second. So we're getting the brain to feel the pressure point of tapping but suddenly changing without losing the, the uh, balance. Are you ready? Here we go. So lift up on one, go down to tap one, suddenly tap two and down. And again, one, tap, down. We're gonna tap one, nope, we change to two. One, now make sure you don't go from here to two and down. Make sure you begin to drop the leg and then tap. We're here, we begin to drop the leg and then tap. So it's a last second change, but the whole time you're in control of the pressure point on the right foot because you're not going here, suddenly going to two and knocking the board. Let's go to the left leg, are you ready? We go up, we're gonna tap one and we tap two. Lift up, I'm gonna tap, oh, I'm just gonna go across here. So we're able to suddenly control change and notice when you do that, notice your right foot how your balance suddenly shifts very slightly to your little toe. So you're in here, you're up and suddenly change. Up, okay, let's come back to the left foot. Now we're gonna to go to tap two, but suddenly tap three. So we're up here slightly wider, and then suddenly I tap three. And you'll notice that when you go to here, again, you've gotta have that soft touch, but notice how you feel the pressure now more on the outside of the left foot because your right leg is going further away. And again, this is really balanced training because I think I'm gonna step here, I suddenly gotta change, so it means my body has to change where it's at. There you go, good, let's change legs. We're gonna go lift the left leg, go to tap two and suddenly tap three. I go here, oh, no, I'm gonna change my foot over here. Up and change here, and again, up change here, and again, up, tap, change, up, and we suddenly change, two more, up, suddenly change, and up, suddenly change. There you go, excellent, I love that exercise. Now, we're gonna do another exercise that's for balance, but before we do, get a quick drink of water. I'm just gonna say hi to whoever just came in. Quick drink of water. Um, hey, there's Wendy, good to see you, Wendy. Wendy's our customer success director. So good to see her here. Um, and Wendy comes in and helps with anything that you need um, as a customer service um, information side. So it's great to see you. Thanks, Wendy, for being here. Hope you're doing beautiful. Um, Bob, you were in Pasadena on New Year's Day. Were you in the Rose Parade on your bicycle? Bob, do you know about the Rose Parade? The Rose Parade is great. They have this great announcer. He has this voice. It kind of sounds like you, Bob. He was there for 38 years. He knew so much about horses and the whole equestrian side. You should watch it sometime, Bob. I think you'd really like it. Um, here we go. Patrick, great to see you. Thanks so much for being here as well. Uh, Vicky, good morning. Look forward to working out with you later, Vicky, uh, even though I won't be there. Uh, Candy, good morning. You've been busy at work. You're catching a few minutes. Stay solid at work. Hi to your boss with me. I know we spoke once before. And great to see you, Doug Minister. The race is coming up, I look forward to that. I love the video that I saw the other day of the car you're gonna be racing. Molly Ann, great to see you. You'll be walking out later, so you're going out for a walk. That's great, take advantage of beautiful weather. And Autumn is back, good morning, Autumn. Lovely to see you as well. So, and my uncle always used to say that to me. Lovely to see you, lovely, it was great. Um, and that's Joel, my uncle, that uh, had cerebral palsy. But what a man he was, great character. Okay, what I want you to do now, we're gonna do a very different exercise. And again, this is not advanced, it's safe, but it's gonna challenge your balance. What I want you to do is take your right foot and place it on two and let the board go back. Now watch for a second, you're gonna pull back, pull the board up by taking the pressure off of your right foot 
but you're not actually removing the right foot from the board. Does that make sense? So what I'm gonna do is transfer all the weight back onto the left leg, and yet our right leg's gonna stay here. I was trying this yesterday, it's harder than it looks. Are you ready? Put your right foot on number two. Now, push back and see if you can find that balance. Your foot does not leave the board here. And try not to use your hands too much. Let the board naturally come up. Here we go, number four, and two more, five, and six. And what you'll notice is we're getting the brain use, come on, bring the, the right leg, we're getting the brain use to weight transference without actually removing a foot to bring yourself back under balance. So we're strengthening now the right leg. Push back, find that balance. Push back, find that balance. I notice a lot different on this one for me, again, because of the ankle. And I'm not talking about the ankle out of sympathy. I'm just talking about it because I'm noticing the change and I want you to be able to feel your own body. Let's go one more on this side. Down and back. There you go, good. Now we'll do the same thing, but we're gonna challenge even harder. We're now gonna step the right foot onto number three. Now, when you come back, don't take your foot off of the board, but let the board come back to the middle. You ready? Here, and hold, and push and come back and hold, and push. I'd love to hear your feedback on this one, because again, it, uh, for me, it's a lot harder than it looks, and it's like I'm so aware of my pressure points, and down, and come back. Now, one thing for the more advanced people to be able to do, and put your left foot on three, is use one hand. I would tend to use the hand that's closest to the leg, and see if you can balance. So you push down, foot stays on the board, come back, because now you can't pull on the pole so much with one hand. Three, and four, try and do it without hands, and five, and six. Excellent, bring it back down. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide the foot. Watch how this works one time, it's the last time through. Put your foot on one, press on one, come back, slide the foot to two, press on two. You guys got that? And we're gonna to slide to three, back to one again. So push on one, come back down the leg, slide the foot to two. You should be able to take your hands off and the board doesn't move. Now push down, come back, slide to three. Push, come back, hold that balance, slide to two, push to two, come back to balance, slide to one, push on one, come back, hold that balance, and change it up. Here we go, are you ready? Left foot, I press on one, I come back and balance, I slide the foot to two. I push on two, I come back, I hold the foot, I slide across, I press on three, I come back, I hold, find that balance, find that, oh, I gotta put more on my right leg for that balance, slide to two, push, come back, keep your left foot on the board, if I let go of the poles, the board should stay where it is if I'm balanced, slide to one, push on one, come back, and for those of you that wanna come back and do this later for a real challenge, do the whole thing with no hands at all. So I'm here, I'm on, I push. So I still feel the connection on the board, but I'm not using my hands. That's if you want a challenge later on to go. Okay, next one we're gonna go on to. Step up on two and two, and here we go, just rocking side to side. There you go, excellent. Doing great. Just feeling those pressure points nice and easy, and now, just try and keep the body still in the center. Let the legs do all of the work. So I'm just rocking side to side. I'm trying to keep, this is really good if you have any form of vertigo or ataxia or anything along those lines. Keep it where your head is completely still and the board is rocking because of the press from the waist down. From the waist up, you stay where you are. This is also really good at integrating and connecting with those muscles in the legs to isolate them for work. Otherwise, we go back to this and you can see how some of the weight transference is the body as well. Okay, what I want you to do now is find your balance and rock side to side and find your balance. 
Now, this is the challenge that we're going to do today for those of you that already have good balance or feel that they want more of a challenge. Find your balance. Now, keeping the balance, lift your right heel off of the board. Your right heel is off of the board and you'll feel you put more pressure into the toe so we get that pressure point training of pressure, the exact pressure you need just from the toe. Now put the, the heel back down, rock side to side. There you go, find your balance. I'm gonna turn my foot slightly this way so you can see. Now lift the heel up. So as I lift the heel up, I've got to adjust my balance. It's easier if I turn it back to here, but I'm holding into that position. Good, and rock side to side. There you go, you're doing great. Hang in here, you're doing fantastic. And find your balance. Now lift the right heel by putting more pressure on the ball of the right foot, but only the right amount. If you push too hard, the board's gonna go. If you go too light, the board's gonna rock to the left. So perfect pressure. Now bring the heel down, rock side to side. There you go, come and find your balance. Now with the right pressure, lift the left heel and push on the ball of the left foot to help keep that balance. Beautiful. And rock side to side last time through. Now find your balance, lift the right heel, keep that balance perfect. Now remember, if you want more of a challenge, here we go, rocking side to side. If you want more of a challenge, find your balance. Go onto a thinner carpet or go onto a thinner mat because again, some of the carpet will help support. So the thinner the carpet, the thinner the mat, the harder the challenge. There you go, good. And rock side to side. And what I want you to do to finish is just, not finish the workout, but just finish the exercise, is just rock and touch. And I want you to really focus on feeling the foot contact on the ground and how solid you feel how strong you feel. For some of those that feel really good, you can do this without holding on, knowing the poles are there. If some of you want to try it, try one hand, have the other hand ready. And for those of you that are just starting out, you can obviously hold on to both poles and only transition when you want a little challenge. And don't go all in, go step by step, just a little bit as we go. Good, find your balance to finish on this exercise. And push the left foot down, step back, grab a quick drink of water. I've got to see what's being written again. Always getting that water going on here. Uh, so, Denise, oh boy, all of these movements are a lot harder than they look. Mm. It's so true. Like, people will look at this and go, oh, that's so easy. Um, and again, I'm always trying to advance it without making it tougher. In other words, it's about brain connection to the body and those little challenges and adjustments. And the beautiful thing about 60 Up is when you're successful, it's because of you. It's not the board. The board will only do what you do. So when you're doing great, congratulate yourself. Know that you're doing great because it's so important that you understand that every success you have is because of the power that you have, not what we're giving you. We're just giving you the opportunity to find out how great you are. So keep that going. You're not sure where your balance is. I know Bob will say, Bob, Bob, Bob will always say, I know where my balance is, I found it in the bathroom. I've never understood that one. Okay, I think Vicky said the other day, she doesn't understand uh, male humor. Sometimes I don't, Vicky either. All right, next one we want to do. Come and stand, hold onto both poles, but I want you to stand to the right of the board. Let me move this this side a little bit so you can see. Now what I want you to do is take your left leg and step on number one and push and come back again. Here we go, you ready? Take your left leg, hold onto the poles. We go to the middle and we come back. We're gonna do six of these. Number one and come back. Number one and come back. Here we go, this is number five, come to the floor, and six. Now, walk around with small little steps, and I want small little steps because again, we wanna increase the ability of moving. I'm gonna move my board this way so you can see. Now again, I put both feet on the ground, hold onto the poles, take my right leg to number one, and push back, and one, and push back. Now, the reason that we're doing this one in here is the ability to strengthen the leg with a side step. I remember a long time ago, one of the ladies, and she was a great lady, I wish I could remember her name, it was over a year ago, last one, 
said that she had a problem good so uh, with going into the pew at church so we know it was over a year ago good i'm just moving my board back this side same thing again are you ready on number one and back one and back and the reason i love those small little steps it gives you the ability to change the speed of foot we know two more one and last one good now quick little steps going around the side quick little step quick little step quick little step line up on the left hand uh, left hand side both poles here we go step on one and come back the deeper you want to squat push your butt back so i can go deeper and come back if you want to four two more five and six now come back to the other side i'm going to go to the middle but this time what i want you to do is step up with your left foot on number one but on the right hand side so we're on one and two now what we're doing is we're looking at sideways stepping down before we stepped up so now from here take your right foot step on the ground come back up to one down two and three and four and five last one down six now instead of getting off of the board we can just step on one one two one and now here we are again balancing on the right leg stepping off the curb sideways come back up that's one and two and three feel the strength four and five last one six good now step on one one two one now we're going to do something a little bit different so follow along and go slow you can follow with me right now you don't have to watch take two step off of the board bring one together now step one and two now we step one one two one down step off step back step up one one two one down step off up step up one one two one step down step off step one step two one one two one down off up up step step all we're doing in here is foot pattern replication of weight transference so that again you have the freedom in life to be able to change quickly how the body is balanced and feeling relative to the ground that you're on last time each side down up one one two one down and up and go to one and stay here on one there you go good so we're going to go to another exercise straight away i think that's an english saying right straight away in america say right away so um what we're going to do is take the left foot to number two the right foot to number three and find that balance just find that balance now to do this and to help those that are starting out new you'll have about 70 percent of your weight on your left leg and about 30 percent on your right leg so again we're adjusting by pushing on this leg this leg's pretty much fixed but feel strong in your left leg and then nice and easy pressure on the right now from here i want you to push your butt back and go into a slight knee bend and stand what we're doing here is we're adjusting pressure point strengthening of the brain awareness but you'll really feel you're training your left leg so for those of you that have a weaker left leg than right this is a great exercise to do to help strengthen up good now bring the right leg to number two left leg goes to number three we just rock side to side loosen up that leg a little bit now put the pressure on the right leg feel the right leg solid now adjust the pressure on your left leg until that board is balanced now push your butt back here we go six knee bends one keep that balance and two and you're doing great three stay with me four and five and six good bring the right leg back to number two 
Left leg to number three, just rock it out a few times. We're doing one more set on this side. And I want you to know, knowing you're there makes a huge difference for me. It's like you guys inspire me to want to continue to be better and better and help more, but at the same time, match your energy, match your commitment um, and help continue to inspire you as well. So without you, I wouldn't be here. So thank you so much for being here. Good. Find your balance. Two and three. Push your butt back slightly. Bend the knee. Here we go. That's one. Your legs won't straighten completely. Two. Don't straighten the leg completely. Three. Just enough to feel that muscle bend. Make sure your butt is going back slightly. Four. Five. Last one. Six. Good. Bring your right foot to number two, left leg to three, and just rock a couple of times. Feel the difference. If you, a great way to feel the difference is keep your body still and feel the difference in the pressure that you have to put on one leg or the other. And again, remember, we're strengthening the muscles today. We're engaging those stabilization muscles that are controlled by the proprioceptive connection. But don't mistake it, you're getting a workout today. Here we go, find your balance. Butt goes back, six knee bends, slight knee bends down. Up, make sure that butt is going back, your knee is not going forward, two and three and four you're doing great come on five last one six good bring your feet back together on one and one what i want you to do is just rock those hips again you can do this if you have vertigo keep your head still keep that head from moving you can pick a point right in the front center in there and just really look at that point and let the body do the work don't let the head do the work. There you go, good. And find your balance. Beautiful. Okay, we've got two more exercises to go today, which is going to be um, a little bit higher intensity for those of you that are starting out. Um, you go at your own pace, and for those of you that are uh, more advanced, I want you to push yourself today to the top edge of your comfort zone. I'm gonna step off first, we're gonna get a quick drink of water. We're gonna come back, we're gonna go into one on one and have our feet um, and, and use our feet and get those feet moving faster. So Diane, um, you put very challenging today, especially for your left foot, left leg. Isn't it amazing? Sometimes we think the harder challenges are when we're um, on, you know, going faster or lifting more weights. And yet when we go back to the basics, this is the foundation and we discover things. It's like with my soccer players. They look like they're playing great. And then I'll go out and I'll do the simple push pass and just passing the ball back and forth, forth between them. And they're so off. And I'm like, that's your foundation. So we have to go back and work on it. And as a coach, I discover more about um, their foundation by doing the simple things than I do watching them play great. And it's the same with myself and with you. Do the simple things and you'll find out some little areas that could be improved and that will help with the more. Uh, with, with the higher levels as well. Bob goes, I never use male humor, but you spelled it M-A-I-L. Bob, I know that's not true because you've sent me some funny emails before. So there you have it. Okay, next one coming up. Put your feet on one and one. Just rock. Now, for those of you that are beginning, just lift your heels. And I'm probably going to have to do this one today because of my ankle injury. And I figured out it's more the Achilles and it's more of a nerve um, issue as well as the strain on the Achilles. Um, so again, I've got to be very careful there today and, and for probably the next six weeks. Eventually, I'll stop talking about it and then you'll know either I realize you're tired of it or I'm better again. Now, what we want to do here is lift the heels a little bit faster. Now, for those of you that are more advanced, I want you lifting those feet off the board and running and going faster. And for those of you that want to get a more workout, lift those feet higher. I'm going to go back to just lifting the ankles. Are you ready? We're going two minutes on a walk here. Hey, we're going walking together. And with the purpose of this is to get your heart rate up and get the muscle tw fast twitch fibers used to reacting quicker. Heels come off of the board. Toes always go back down first. Here we go. I'm gonna put us at 15 seconds right now. There you go, and you should start feeling 
And this is a great way to know where you're at. You, you can talk to yourself. I did that all the time until the men in white coats let me go. Uh, but sometimes when you talk, and they say a good way to judge your exertion rate is if you were walking with a friend and you can hold a conversation, you know you're at a good exertion rate. But if you can't hold the conversation, it's like for me now, I'm talking to you. I know that I can hold that uh, conversation with you, although it's one directional, um, which means I'm within my um, comfort zone and yet I'm still challenging my aerobic capacity. Here we go. Keep it going. We're one minute in. One minute left to go. This is your um, cardio. And the reason we do cardio is that when you go outside and go for a walk, you want to have trained harder than the walk itself will be because you can go outside and walk slower and your body, because it's used to going faster, will find it very comfortable and you'll be solid, you'll be strong. And that's one of the reasons that I do these exercises. And again, if some of you are just learning, you can go at this pace, but get yourself going a little faster than you would want to, if you were just relaxed. There you go, good. We've got 30 seconds left. We're pushing those 30. Let's go, Mr. Eubanks. Mr. Eubanks, let's keep it going. You're doing great. I see some more messages coming in. It's always good to hear from you. Get this work in. We've got 10 seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And bring your feet to two and two. Now it's always really important that when you finish the workout and you have something in your eye, no, I'm just joking, I have something in my eye, that we begin to bring the heart rate down. If you just suddenly stop, the heart goes from working to suddenly wondering what's going on. So it's always good to do a little activity where again, we're still moving, we're still keeping the blood going, the heart rate is beginning to lower because we've still got some activity but we're not pushing it and we give the heart time to recover on its own back to a normal um, working or resting rate depending on what you're gonna do next. There you go, just nice and easy. Excellent. Now I have one more exercise today for you ladies and gentlemen, but um, I have to be really careful here because this is one that's not good for my ankle because it's injured, but if I had weak ankles, I would be doing this all the time, probably two to three times a week. That's not all the time, is it? But two to three times a week. So I'm going to try it because I think it's important for all of us um, to be able to do so. I'm gonna, let's go to the left foot first so I can show you knowing that this ankle is good. Put your left foot right in the middle of the board, come and stand on the middle, and all I want you to do is try and balance. Now, what I want you to do is actually rock the board side to side. They are, use your hands to push it. I've still got something in my eye. And feel how the ankle is working on different areas. So you'll feel when you push the outside, the strength goes to the inside and you'll feel that little squeeze when you go to the right on the outside of the left ankle. So again, we're getting that engagement of the ankle moving. Now come and find your balance. There you go. And again, rock the ball with your hands. Let the foot feel the changes. Really, really feel those changes that are going underneath the ball of the foot and the little toe. Now find that balance. We're just gonna do it one time on, the, that was two times, but one time on this side. Now bring your right foot across. You have to forgive me if I choose not to continue doing this one. It's because I need to, again, take care of the ankle. But right now it feels okay. So. Rock the board side to side. If you're not good on one leg, you can actually put the, the left foot a little bit on the board, just so you feel safe. Now find your balance. If you want more of a challenge, lift the left leg higher. You'll notice how the balance changes slightly and you're working your hip flexor into here. You're tightening those ab muscles up. Good, and rock the board side to side. Good. Again, feel the pressure points. Feel the little toe, the big toe, the heel. Feel how those pressure points are affecting your ability to balance. And we're going to the last one. Find that balance. If you want to challenge a little bit more, take one hand off 
and feel, and you can change hands for those safety, feel how when you take your hands off, how much tighter you begin to feel that pressure into the ball because we have less safety with the hands, so we get those feet to move more. Good, and put your left foot on two, right foot on two, and just walk and just kick your heels back. That's the end of today's workout. Again, it's not, it looks like people will watch this and go, oh, that's easy. I've seen it so many times. We go, I can do that. I've had professional athletes. That's nothing. I could do that. Then I put them on the board and they're like, oh, um, yeah, not as easy as I thought. But it's amazing how quickly they get it because all we're doing is re-engaging the brain to the body and letting the brain take control of what it's there to do which is help your balance. Good, push down with the left foot, come and step back. What I want you to do is grab a quick drink of water because we came off of that cardio. Whew, and a good day today. So we're in here, going back. Um, Bob Eubanks, my banker knows about 60 up. He keeps telling me my balance is bad. <laughs> Bob. If he knows about 60 up, he'll know how your balance is good. It's just not your bank balance, obviously. Uh, Judith, great to see you here. Is this a once a day program? One of the things that I love for people to do, and please stay with me because we're gonna do the cool down. I say it's better to do it twice a day for 20 minutes than it is once a day for 30 minutes. The reason being obviously there's an extra 10 minutes, but think about it, we're teaching the brain to re-engage the body. So by doing it for 20 minutes and then waiting 24 hours, you've got a 24 hour difference in between, but if you could do it at like nine o'clock in the morning and then five o'clock in the afternoon, you've got another retraining of the brain to the body connection. But again, even doing it 10 minutes a day is great compared to obviously doing it once every week. Um, but this, this class is a once a day class um, that we teach Monday through Friday with two amazing female coaches, uh, Kathy and Debbie on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. All right, we're going into a little stretch now. What we do is push the board to the right, put the ball of your right foot on the edge of the board, and just sink that heel to the ground. Now, because I've got an Achilles injury, I'm keeping my leg straight. Um, not because it's not good to do, but again, I wanna take the pressure off of the Achilles. If I want to put more pressure, and you guys can learn this, just bend your knee very slightly and feel how the stretch goes further down the back of the leg behind the knee, all the way to the ankle and the key. So if you have tight Achilles, it's a great stretch to do softly and slowly by bending your leg slightly and feeling that stretch lower down. Let's push to the left, put the left ball of the foot, push the heel to the ground. There you go. This side I can mess around a little bit, not mess around, you know what I mean? I can change the stretch, so I'm going from a knee bent so I get the Achilles and then I straighten the leg so I can feel it going up the calf so I can stretch certain areas at the back of my lower leg. Good, let's go back to the right side again. This one I'm going to keep my leg straight. Just feel that calf stretch and calf stretches are one of my favorite stretches you can do. Hey Bob, I see you've got another comment in there, Bob. Oh, I got to keep coming up with more and more uh, responses to Mr. Eubanks who's constantly playing everybody loves it. There you go, good, I'm gonna just bend that knee slightly, excellent. Now what I wanna do is take it, push your heel, toe against the pole, push the heel to the edge of the board, and then just lean forward slightly. There you go, you're feeling that stretch down the back of the leg, such an amazing stretch. And I suggest even doing this one, if you're walking past the board and you've, you've been sitting down for a while, even as you, you get up and go to the bathroom, maybe do it on the way back from the bathroom so it doesn't stop you getting there. But even just doing this little stretch a couple of times a day when you're out, you know, just walking, just very relaxed, walk past the board. It's so good for engaging the muscles to stretch them out because we know flexibility gives freedom of movement. The other thing it will do is by stretching, it allows the blood flow to go better through the muscles. When you sit there too long, you can end up with um, cramping coming up, muscle shortening, you can end up with the blood not moving as much around the body. And so again, anytime you get to stretch, go ahead and just take a moment, just 10 seconds. Ah, oh, it feels so good. It feels so bad, it feels so good, it feels so bad, so good. Good, and come and stand back up. Good, what I'm gonna do is just give me some butt kickers in here, stretching out the front of the legs. I remember when I went from 
being at professional soccer clubs to dancing, I had never stretched in England. We never stretched, it was too cold. If you stopped and stretched on the soccer field, you'd freeze and pull all your muscles. So we just trained and never stretched. Suddenly I'm in dance class and doing ballet and all these people do splits and box splits and kick their leg past their ears. And I'm there, I can't even get my heel past my knee. So um, I remember the pain I went through stretching. Good, put your feet slightly apart. Just lean to one side. I went through so much pain to be able to try and get supple enough as a dancer to be able to dance and do the choreography that they were asking. But it felt amazing once you got there. But it took me probably two years to really get to the point where I could do the splits and all the other, no comments there, Mr. Eubanks. But yeah, I used to be able to do the splits and jump and hold my leg in my hand and fall on the ground into the splits and crazy stuff. Now I'm like, if I did that, I think I'd end up with uh, legs in different, different states. State of pain being one of them. Okay, here we go. Shake those legs out. I want you to now roll your ankle. I'm gonna do this very light on my right foot. Push the ball of the foot into the ground and just roll the knee to the outside. I want you to feel the stretch going on around the ankle. I'm gonna take this one really slow because I can feel it actually too much strain. I'm actually gonna stop on this one and just shake it. But you keep rolling it, keep rolling it. Go two more times around rolling. Now let's go to the left side. Here we go, just roll it around. I can feel that stretch that's going on nice and slow. Again, you wanna have supple ankles. So again, doing a little bit of flexibility movement every day will help with your ability to react to balance. Because if, it's like if you have a, um, if you stand with your legs and you can rest, stand with your legs together and you push, someone pushes you, it's hard to stay up. But if you have that ability with a bent leg and your legs very slightly apart and someone pushes you, you can react, it's the same. Having the strength and the suppleness in the left ankle will, or either ankle will allow you to flex and push back rather than be stiff and go over. So again, those flexibility is so important. Last couple of exercises, roll those shoulders out. We would have had a little bit of tension in there just because our arms are in that holding position. Good, and roll them forward. There you go, you're doing great, love it. Just stretching it out, interlock your hands together, just push them away, a little bit of that um, stretching. A little bit of that stretching, there you go. Again, it's just a small little stretch, pushing against those muscles that so often have been in this position because we've been writing and we grew up at desks and we're so used to the hand or the wrist being turned in, just that little stretch out is so good. Now put your hands behind your back. What I want you to do is take your left hand, grab your right wrist, and just pull it across very slightly. If I did it from behind, just a little pull across to help loosen up the shoulder. Now change. Take your right hand and wrap it around your left wrist, and very slowly, just a small little movement. You're not pulling that, that uh, the, the elbow or the arm, just very slowly giving that extra little bit of a stretch. It's almost like you're rocking a baby behind. Imagine you're holding a baby behind. Who would do that? There you go, good. Come down, roll those wrists out, just roll them around a couple of times. And that's the end of the class today. Don't forget to have your water. Thanks so much for sticking with me through this because it's so important that we uh, you know, cool down, get those stretches afterwards. And I really appreciate you all being here and sticking with me through to the very end because again, stretching is something that I don't do enough of. I tend to get up, exercise, and I wanna get out and do stuff, but it's so important. And taking the time to do that is great. Uh, Bob, is dance the same as dancer? Well, dance, you're talking about dancer and dancer. Dancer and dancer. Mm. Bob, I'll teach you an English accent one day. That'd be great. Imagine if you had an English accent, Bob, you would have had a career in radio. Wouldn't that have been amazing? Think about that. Crazy. And you may have got hired on the Rose Parade as well, because I know you went for that job and you were trying to have that job on the Rose Parade. And after 38 years, you tried out for that gig and then you finally had to retire. 
that everyone knows you for those, Bob, and you were fantastic on all of them. And it was always a pleasure to hear your voice. And at the same time on the Rose Parade, I know so many people love the uh, way that you you would know so much about horses. And it's because people didn't realize how much of an equestrian background you have and how you were a rodeo rider. And you knew so much about the horses and all the different places around because you traveled so much as well and personally got involved with the different floats and getting to know people. So um, thanks for all that you did, Bob, for many, many years. It made so many um, people's day and the beginning of the year. I mean, what a great way to start the year. And I know so many people as well miss you being on the Rose Parade. Um, Pat, thank you. I really appreciate you being here again. Very simple exercises, not the craziest, hardest of classes. But again, going back to the basics, the foundation for everything that you'll be doing in life. And thanks so much for um, being here as always. Well, that's the end of the class today. I hope you had a great um, experience feeling your body, feeling your pleasure, feeling your um, the simplicity, feeling the pressure points. Remember, this is preventative as much as it is being corrective. So make sure that again, by doing these exercises, you take away the loss of balance. So if you got better, keep doing little exercises because again, preventative is probably more important than recovery because if it's preventative, you won't have so much recovery. Uh, Kirk, thanks so much for being here. Always great to have you here, my friend. And uh, stay warm. I think it's gonna be a warmer day down there in Arizona. I just met with a great lady um, who's from Arizona the other day down in Malibu. And she was, uh, I'm trying to think, what part of Arizona she was in. It was like a small town. There's a lot of small towns in Arizona, right? But small town, a great lady. And uh, who knows, I can't wait to come back down there. Our call center for 60 Up is based out of Tempe, Arizona. Um, that's where the people work, when people call 800 numbers and stuff. Our customer service is based here in California. So if you call the 855 number, you're gonna get to the California, but our call center is based in Tempe, Arizona. And I have to say, I love going down there. The name of the company is Triton. Um, and I go down there and train their agents to help work with 60 Up. Great company. I always have the best time down there when I go to Arizona. So thanks so much for being here. Uh, Kirk, you say it's only 74 today. Um, yeah, are you talking about Bob Eubanks? Bob Eubanks is only 74 today. That's great. And Bob will tell you, if you've seen the commercial on the social media, we have there, Bob, go ahead and write what you love to say when you talk about your age, because I'm not going to take it away from you. That's your line, my friend. So it's great. But Bob's only 74 today. Isn't that nice, Bob, that Kirk said that about you? But anyway, I know you're talking about the weather and thing. Have a beautiful day. Thanks so much for all being here. Thanks, Ildi. Such a simple class, I know. And I know you'll be kicking it um, with uh, Kathy and with Debbie in the next lot of days. Don't forget, I'm back on Thursday. Um, a harder class. Let's see if I'm at a different location. That would depend on my ankle and what I could do, but we may have a different location. I'm, I might be having this regular Thursday. There you go, Bob. He's 74 plus shipping and handling. There you go, that's awesome. Um, yeah, Thursday, remember, it's gonna be a higher level workout. Um, could be a different location, could be here, you never know, um, but always wanna bring you the best of energy. So come ready on Thursday, have your short and long bands ready. I'm not sure because I haven't planned it yet, which ones we're gonna use, and if you have a preference, let me know because anything you post on here, I go back and read. And if there's things you want help with or challenges you want, I will put those into my classes. Anyway, love to you all. Love to all the people that are watching on YouTube when these get posted up on YouTube. Can't wait for you guys to uh, hopefully join us one day live. We have an amazing community. Be safe, stay special, and love to you all. Bye. Bye, mum.